Hi Aries, welcome to your July 2017 astro update. It's Rena here. So I was just like thinking about you guys. If you are currently married, you may find that it's kind of weird because Jupiter is in Libra and it's in the opposite house from your first house. Oh, by the way, this is for Aries Sun and Aries Rising people out there. And so you have Jupiter in your seventh house of committed partnership. So that can work very well for anyone who maybe has experienced marital difficulties in the past or who has wanted to get hitched and for whatever reason wasn't able to do so earlier because you can experience luck and expansion through committing to a partner. But you have so much energy in July um, and going into, and actually in August as well, in the fifth house of new love, that it makes me think that for some of you, you may switch your alliance, <laughs> if you will, to a new partner. And I'll get into that. You'll see what I mean. I'm just going to try to be methodical about this, which is kind of a challenge for me because I like to jump wherever my mind takes me. And I have it written out in order, so I'm going to try to do it in order. Um, so Venus goes into Gemini on the 4th of July, which in America is our Independence Day. It's a holiday. And so this is in your third house of communication. Venus has been in your earned income sector before that. And um, so you may have been more absorbed with um, buying luxury items or perhaps um, just in enjoying the fruits of your labor. Um, you know, the, in the earned income sector, Venus can bring more money there. And so you may just be enjoying your prosperity. And then it goes into your communication sector. So this can really deal with um, contacting someone romantically through the internet. Maybe you find out this might be somebody that you've already known and you kind of rediscover them. And so um, the interesting thing about that is that on the 31st of the month, Venus goes into the fourth house of home and family. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of you do contact someone from your high school years or your elementary school years, and maybe one of you, um, possibly you, goes back to that area. And if they live there, you may visit them in that area that's in your home town area. Mercury goes into your fifth house the day after this, on the 5th of July. So before then, it's been your fourth house of home and family. So you're already connected to the past, to your family of origin, perhaps. Maybe you're um, talking to people. It's also, it's, um, also possible, by the way, that this is dealing with real estate um, and that Venus means that maybe you're trying to buy a house or sell your property and you get that money at the end of the month uh, when Venus goes into the fourth house and um, you're talking, maybe wheeling and dealing starting on July 5th and that's what leads to the sale at the end of the month. Mars is going to be in your fourth house for most of the month, okay, until the 20th when it goes into your love sector. So Mars in the fourth house is very interesting. It can simply mean a lot of activity regarding home matters, maybe physical stuff. And by physical, I mean home renovation, um, with Mars, it could be like just tear, tear downs and stuff like that. Or it could be simply um, conflict. Sometimes Mars indicates conflict. And, and actually, Mars is your ruler, Aries. So anything that involves um, Mars is very important to you. 
Um, and then it goes into the fifth house on July 20th, and that can be some kind of sexual attraction. It can be um, the emphasis being placed on matters of the heart, and this would be a new relationship. This would be, as I say, on the physical side of things, that you feel that strong attraction to somebody. It can also be for artists, it can be a time when you're very prolific, um, or at least very ambitious about do, you know, completing a project, maybe even starting a project. And, um, I wanted to just say something about this fifth house because there's going to be a new moon here on July 23rd. It's zero degrees of Leo. So it's the, you know, when you have the, the zero, it's an unknown quantity. You know, you think about the fool card in the tarot and it's the absolute beginning. And we don't know what's going to happen. Whether it's a new love affair, we don't know if it's going to last. If it's a creative project, we don't know if it's going to come to fruition, if anything's going to come of it. But it's, it's, at the embryonic stage, let's put it that way. But then in August, there's another new moon in Leo, which is very unusual. The second new moon, and it's at a late degree of Leo. It's at the 21st degree. And it will be, on, I'm, I'm sorry, the 27th degree, or 28th degree. And it will happen on August 21st. So it's at the very end of Leo, but still the same house. So these are both new beginnings and it's a solar eclipse, which means it's like the, po the power of three new moons and very much launching you in some way with those matters of the fifth house. But there's also the North Node in this house for the next 18 months. So it could be some kind of destiny um, related to love, related to creativity. And and um, who knows, maybe with Jupiter in that seventh house, could be somebody that you decide to marry. Now, Jupiter is only going to be in Libra until um, about October 11th. So <laughs> hopefully... People are not getting married um, one month after meeting people, but um, I just wanted to, to mention and emphasize the kind of um, serendipity that's associated with your fifth house. And also, by the way, the fifth house is your home business and, uh, and also any kind of sport that you are taking up. So there can be other things going on as well and children. So um, these kinds of things, children may figure into your life in some kind of a faded way. But I don't mean that in an ominous way, actually in a positive way. The other thing, I, I tried to do things in order and I kind of skipped around. There is going to be a full moon in Capricorn on July 9th. And this is going to be in your 10th house of career. So whenever you have full moons in the 10th house, now... Obviously, you can always say, well, it might be an ending. It might be I end a career. I decide this isn't the direction I want to go in my life. But what it could mean is that you receive recognition because with the full moon comes awareness. But it's you being on center stage and maybe other people seeing your talents and your success in some kind of a public way. The 10th house is like you um, before the public. It's your public reputation. So this can be, this can also um, accompany with it like some kind of a promotion uh, in, your, in your career. But um, other people may find that you're being showcased and become aware of all the things that you're up to. And that can indicate some kind of success for you, Aries. So it really looks like a wonderful month. And even going into August, 
uh, for Aries people. So good luck to you. And um, I hope you have a great July. Aries, I'd like to let you know about an offer that I have for natal chart interpretations right now. If you're interested in a personal reading, um, I have different types of readings. And you can find out more by clicking the link below, which will take you to rainamoonastrology.com. Take care of yourselves. Bye.